But an, another possibility, which is a very real possibility, is that Israel feels totally uh, immune and uh, has total impunity against any retaliation by the world, whatever it does. Hello and welcome to News Click and People's Dispatch. Today, we're very honored to be joined by Raja Shahade, who is an award-winning writer. He's written a lot of novels as well as essays, but also importantly, one of the key founder members of Al Haq, a civil rights organ, a Palestinian civil rights organization. Now, Al Haq is one of the most reputed civil rights organizations in the region, but also was in the news recently when, along with five other NGOs, it was declared a terrorist organization by Israel's defense minister, Benny Gantz. Now, this has prompted international condemnation, of course, but at the same time is part of a campaign Israel has been continuing for a long time. Thank you so much for joining us. So, first of all, I wanted to ask you about uh, the context in which this declaration has been made. We know that, of course, many, many organizations in the recent past have been targeted in various ways. Palestinian organizations, Palestinian activists have been, there have been crackdowns, many have been detained, put in administrative detention, for example. But this declaration of six organizations, some of which are very prominent, many of which have a record, long record of working not only in the country, but with international groups as well. That was seen as a surprise by many people. So does this really mark an escalation as far as Israel's actions are concerned? Absolutely. In, in fact, I have expected that al haq would be beset by all kinds of uh, uh, harassments, but never expected that it will come to the point when it will be declared designated as a terrorist organization. Uh, this is extreme uh, and, and un, un, unpredicted. Uh, of course, over the years, the organization has, has had many difficulties. So for example, when we started, established it in 1979, uh, Israel said that it was but a cover up for the PLO. The PLO, the Palestinian Liberation Organization was then a prescribed organization, a legal organization. And then it, uh, it, it said it was a cover for other organizations that were also prescribed. prescribed. And, and when we uh, made our first uh, book on uh, exposing Israel's uh, actions in the law, in, in, in passing laws that are uh, intended to increase the settlements and, and uh, annex the lands and take over the, the land and so on, they answered us with a book uh, of their own. So the, the level of the communication then was, was much different. And then in, in 2002, uh, when Israel invaded the West Bank, uh, they uh, trashed and uh, attacked and, and uh, destroyed so many NGOs and official uh, offices in the Palestinian Authority, but uh, did not come at all to al haq and, and stayed away from our offices. So uh, uh, over the years, uh, although there was harassment, although there was a, a arrests of the uh, uh, field workers and the present director who was then a field worker, uh, Shawan Jabarin was uh, de detained and tortured and tortured heavily over the years. And, and yet uh, uh, still uh, the, the organization was never closed. And so this comes as a total surprise and, and the shock that it is declared a terrorist organization of all things. Right, in this context, I just wanted to ask you a bit more about this declaration by Benny Gatz itself. First of all, how does Israel even have the right to declare a Palestinian organization as a terrorist organization or as a front for terrorist activity? This is a very important question, of course, but uh, the way it happened is this. It, it first was an order by the Minister of Defense of Israel under an Israeli law, the counter-terrorism law, uh, uh, declaring the organization, the six organizations as terrorist organizations. Now this is the Israeli law and, and this would have made the organizations uh, prescribed in Israel, which, which then would mean that uh, money would not be able to come through and they could arrest anybody uh, in Israel and so on. But it was not the case in the West Bank. And when I was asked and interviewed about the matter, and wrote about it, I said, maybe Israel would stop short of declaring it a prescribed organization in the West Bank. But now on November 7, uh, they did. And they did this by using a British emergency regulation from the mandate period of 1947. And, 
And of course, the British legacy in, in Palestine is terrible because they left us with all kinds of terrible laws which are co continue to be used. And according to this law, there is a list of uh, prescribed organizations. And now Al Haq and six, uh, five other organizations are on that list, which means that anybody supporting the organization, working for the organization, or having anything to do with the organization is a terrorist who can be uh, 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 detained and imprisoned and imprisoned for a lengthy period of time. And, and that's how it happens. Now, of course, the Oslo, and the Oslo agreement, the, uh, uh, the responsibility for NGOs was given over to uh, the Palestinian Authority. But Israel retained anything that it deems is a security matter. And this it deems is a security matter. And so it can uh, do this declaration and prevent the organization from, from going, from continuing. In this context, I also wanted to ask you about the work done by these organizations, because most of them have been involved in chronicling human rights violations, for instance, even the issues faced by prisoners, issues faced by the agriculture in the region. So why is it that, uh, you know, Israel is specifically targeting these organizations at this point of time? This is a question. Why are they targeting them and at this specific time? One possibility could be that they are successful, that they have been able to bring about a change in the perception of the world about the, what is happening in the occupied territories. Another possibility is that Al Haq, for example, has been very active in uh, taking, uh, uh, supplying evidence to the International Criminal Court in, in The Hague about uh, the Israeli war crimes. And, and the investigation has begun by the court, which Israel is very angry about and very worried about, of course. And so perhaps this is in retaliation for, for that action. But an, another possibility, which is a very real possibility, is that Israel feels totally uh, immune and uh, has total impunity against any retaliation by the world, whatever it does. And so if it declares these organizations which are important and well-known all over the world as terrorist organization, it believes it can get away with it. Now, that's because of their arrogance and their uh, perception of power. Right. You mentioned the impunity aspect, which actually I think also uh, you know, undergirds many of Israel's actions in recent times on a variety of issues. For instance, even when it comes to the Oslo Accords, you were talking about the, the state kind of statements Israeli leaders are making shows really how much they don't you know, care about it at all. But also in this context, I wanted to ask you, what has the response been from uh, Israeli civil society? And how does this also reflect? Does this reflect the fact that the polity is shifting much, much more to the right as well? Well, when the... Uh... Beit Salem, the Israeli human rights organization, was, was the, uh, called the, uh, that its members were tre committing treason. The Israeli public uh, rallied behind them. But then the Israeli public is, uh, uh, in, when it comes to Palestinians, uh, uh, see, see the Palestinians as anything but human beings, really. And so the possibility that the Israeli public would rally behind the Haq and the five organizations for uh, against this designation as terrorists is unlikely. However, there have been many individual and organizations in Israel who have said that this is unacceptable. And uh, one of the major papers hired it said it's a, a stain on Israel's reputation to, to do this action. But then these are the minorities and, and, and the majority of the, the Israelis are uh, viewing the Palestinians in very, uh, uh, terrible ways because of the educational system. The educational system in Israel has uh, uh, imbibed into Israeli consciousness all the bad things about Palestinians, and they do not believe that the Palestinians are even uh, uh, possible, possibly could do human rights. They, they believe that uh, Palestinians are just pretending to do human rights in order to do other things which are illegal and which justify Israel's actions. So it's a very bad situation I think that we are in now, very bad situation. Absolutely. In terms of the relations between the two people. Right. And also there was a lot of, for instance, news items about how say some of Israel's key allies were taken by surprise was what the media kept saying. But has, does this also indicate a failure on the part of the international community, which although professing support, for instance, for the two state solution has been giving Israel more and more leeway to conduct many of its 
occupational policies, its school policies. So even the fact that many of the reactions have just been sort of symbolic, does it also indicate the fact that the international community is just you know, completely withdrawn from this cause? Well, we have to wait and see about the reaction of the international community as far as this is concerned. Just yesterday, uh, the uh, uh, United Nations and, and, and the uh, Association for International Development Agencies uh, uh, has uh, made a, a declaration that they have not received any convincing evidence and that in, in fact, they will continue to deal with these organizations. So it is uh, to be seen yet how, how these organizations are going to, to behave. But uh, it's unlikely that the European organizations which have been funding al haq would withdraw their funding. Although some organizations such as one in Finland, uh, uh, which is a missionary uh, related to the church has decided to, to withdraw funding because they didn't want to jeopardize their work in other places in the area. And so it, it depends from one organization to the other, but if the organizations do not stand in, in, in with the haq, it, it will be very bad. And I think there was something that was said by the uh, uh, UN that counterterrorism legislation must be in accordance with obligations under international humanitarian law and international human rights law, which include full respect for the rights of, to freedom and of association and expression. Uh, this is the UN statement. And that's a very important statement, I think, because Israel has used the counterterrorism legislation to, to do this. And they are saying that it is not a, co a correct usage of uh, counterterrorism. And that's very important, I think. Right. And finally, just quickly wanted to ask you about the situation of the activists of some of these organizations on the ground and the kind of popular support they're receiving. So could you maybe also talk a bit about how Palestinian organizations are maybe mobilizing in solidarity and what are the kind of actions that are being taken? You know, Palestinian organizations and society are used to harassments because it's been 50 years since the occupation began and 50 relentless years of total con constant uh, harassment and, and uh, attempt to stop uh, uh, any action to, to, to end the occupation or to bolster the life of the Palestinian civil society. So there, we're, we're very used to it. And the fact that uh, uh, such a declaration would mean that these organizations will be uh, scared and, and closed and stop working is unlikely. So uh, the, the, uh, uh, there's no question that there will be opposition and there will be a challenge for, for, to, the, to this and, and the organization will continue to work and be supported by the society, which realizes how important is the NGO uh, sector in whether in the medical services or in social welfare or in, in human rights and so on. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Raja Shahade, for speaking to us. We'll come back to you, of course, for more such interviews and updates as well. Thank you so much. My pleasure. That's all we have time for today. Keep watching News Click and People's Dispatch.